Hey, cheers. Hello, 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 beautiful people. The book is out. Real life, real love, man. Oh, we're super duper excited. The book is out right now. You can pick it up at Amazon.com, Barnes and Nobles, or wherever you get your books. You can also pick up the Audible too, and we're narrating actually the book. So we'll be talking and guiding you through this whole book. So while we're waiting for people to come on, let's start. What made us decide to write this book? I'll let you start with that. Well, um, the main reason that I wanted to write the book is just that I wanted to share with people our journey. I feel as though we've experienced some of the highest highs and the lowest lows, and there is a lot to be learned through those high highs and through those low lows. We've gained a tremendous amount of experience and have also, which have also afforded us a tremendous amount of wisdom. So I thought that a lot of what we've gone through would be beneficial for people to read about. Yeah, so we made it to a Shade Room and, and some of these other blog sites. Yes. All because you don't have an orgasm. <laughs> you said I don't. Man, well, you, think I, you, you think I'm still faking it? No, no, no. You, I know you're not. But it's funny <laughs> that a lot of the, what the sites was like, 10 years, yes. You know, we've been going out since uh, dating since 16 and 15, so early on. Uh, we didn't know each other. Uh, we were new with anything as far as relationship is concerned, new with sex. And I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, she didn't know what she was doing. And we didn't know what we were doing together. Uh, so for a while, we didn't know. But uh, we figured it out. And that's the that's the reason that we wanted to write the book, to talk to couples that might be going through problems that just don't know how to have a conversation. Um, and I think a lot of the things that we did early on were reasons why we needed to have conversations and needed to really talk to each other about what's going on, about our bodies, about our minds, what we thought. But when we started dating at 16 and 15, we honestly didn't know. We didn't know. There was no instruction manual for relationships. So we had to figure it out. And that was one of the reasons why we decided to be so open and honest and write this book. Yes. We also wanted to empower people to be accountable for their actions and to be accountable for their feelings. Our feelings come to us naturally, but you have to own your feelings and you have to find um, a solid place when you're feeling the things that you're feeling. And communication, I think that that was very, very big for us. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to emp empower people to push for communication mm -hmm. because, for instance, Rashawn even though you're one of those people that say communicate, 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 uh -huh. you haven't always been the best communicator. Mm -hmm. And I feel as though I had to kind of settle into um, a comfort where I felt good forcing you to communicate as much pushback as you gave me. Mm -hmm. And I know that it made you uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but you kind of hunkered down. And when it was very necessary, you decided to communicate Absolutely. with me. What was that like for you? Which part? being forced to communicate when you really didn't feel like it? Well, I guess a better question would be, why didn't you always feel like communicating? Uh, I didn't know, I didn't want to. I didn't want to, it's uncomfortable and awkward conversations. And sometimes those conversations are difficult to have, uh, especially when it's things around sex or our relationship. It's easy to just you know, give a surface answer and keep it moving. Um, but when you realize talking actually makes your relationship a lot stronger, uh, and knowing the person's other side and knowing that you're having these conversations not to have an argument, but to really understand each other. I think that's when you open up your relationship and you can get the big power on Super Mario. Okay, he puts it that way. But there's, there's a lot of people I see on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you guys have purchased the book or you've heard the Audible book and you have some questions, I know a lot of you guys got your book if you ordered it early. They delivered a lot of the books on Saturday. So... I know a lot of people said they already started to read it and everything. And if you have, we want you to leave reviews because we want to hear your reviews. Yeah. What you like, what you love, what really um, stood, you know, maybe close to you or what you didn't like. Because, you know, these are, our, these are it's our books and we would love to read those reviews. So definitely put reviews if you have read the book. And we want to uh, talk to some of you guys now. Yeah, so let's start taking some questions. Okay, Danielle from VA, what's the biggest takeaway you want your readers to gain? Danielle from VA wants to know what is the biggest takeaway mm -hmm. that we want our readers to gain? Okay. Um, for me, I want our readers to understand that there is life after 
big problems in your relationship. Correct. But it's not just granted to you because someone apologizes. A lot of times apologies are worthless mm -hmm. because they get told over and over and over again. And sometimes it just seems like an empty remedy to a problem. Mm -hmm. And I've felt that way before where, you know, something would happen and you would apologize. And then I would say to myself, I know that the same thing is going to happen a month from now. And then mm -hmm. he's just going to apologize. And then you kind of feel as though you're in this endless cycle. Um, I just, I never accepted that. I never was okay with it. Um, and for me, it was kind of about getting you to understand that an apology isn't a way to just buy time and make something go away. Kind of getting you to understand what an apology really signified. Mm -hmm. And that, it seems like um, something very, very simple, but... It took a very long time because if you're with someone who doesn't really, um, who, who feels like a conversation is kind of like a trap and doesn't really want to be made to feel guilty or to be made to feel, as you put it earlier, uncomfortable, it's hard to really um, get them to engage. And a lot of times the person that's trying to get them to engage feels like a villain, like you're forcing a situation, but at the end of the day, that's really owed to you. Mm -hmm. There's a situation. It's owed to you to have a conversation. So I just want people to feel um, comfortable and to be able to stand in their intuition and stand in what they know is right for their sanity, for their well-being within the relationship, and to not be made to feel guilty or crazy or as though you're um, being too forceful. Right. And, and we just want to... Uh... Reiterate, anybody who purchases a book today from PremierCollectibles.com slash Casey, you get an autographed copy. I know a lot of you guys have Audibles, and I love Audible, too. I read Barack Obama's book, Audible, and it was great, but I like to have the hard copy, right? I like to have the copy that I can put in my, on my table or in my bookcase. So if you order it today from PremierCollectibles.com, uh, if we're not coming to your city, you can get an autographed copy today. So please order the book, uh, and we'll autograph it for you. What else we got? What's next? Lauren from Texas, a pinch me moment in both of your careers. Today? What is a pinch me moment in, um, in both of our careers? Um, for me, this book is very significant. Um, if you've already read it, if you've gotten a copy, or if you've heard some of the reviews thus far, you'll know that it's very, very open, it's very vulnerable, it's very transparent, it's very authentic, it's raw. And um, that took a lot of work, uh, not just putting pen to paper, but to go through the journey to discover all of those emotions and at the end to make sense of all of those emotions. For everything that we've gone through to be able to come full circle and to then be able to put it on paper. That was very, very um, significant and enlightening and freeing for me. So today, having the book be released where everybody gets to open the pages and peek into our hearts, our souls, our minds, and most intimately, our relationship, it's, um, it's a very, very huge pinch me moment for me. I'm just, I'm glad to share with everyone. Yeah, for me, I would have to say the same, and I'll and I explain to you why. Of all of your pinch me moments yeah, today? Yeah, I'm going to tell you why. Because writing the book wasn't one of the things that I had on my list, right? I didn't see it coming. It wasn't okay. something that I planned to do. Yeah. So if you think about it, like when I start DJing, it's great because I get to share with the world, right? Somebody can have a bad day, after a horrible day, they, excuse me, come to the club, and all of a sudden I can change their mood. So I love it. And you can get judged by that, by the club reaction, right? You can go to a club and the DJ's trash, and you know nobody's in the dance, right? So that's a moment that I always remember, right? And it's always the radio, right? The radio, you, you get judged by ratings. You can do anything on the radio that can help people, whether it's, you know, uh, Charlemagne with mental health, or me with entrepreneurship, or me with real estate, or Angela Yee with entrepreneurship. We can feel it right away, and you've got ratings. Um, then real estate, right? I, I do real estate, I do the car shows, and you get instant reaction when people come and they learn and they buy houses, it makes you feel great. 
car show, same thing. So many people come, families. But with this, it's we did it because we really wanted to help. All right, we didn't care about anything else. When we started the podcast. There was no money value for us. We just wanted to help people that were that were in relationships like us that might have started young, that didn't know, that didn't have anybody to talk to, and said we can be that outlet. We will be honest, so hopefully we can help somebody. And sometimes it's brutally honest, but we're honest to help people. So with this book, it was the same thing. We wrote this book and we were brutally honest, and we really didn't know what to expect. You know, um, when we did the book, we we took it like we were rappers, like. She was a rapper. I was a DJ. Like we was going on tour and, you know, we were doing things that probably most people wouldn't do because that's all we knew. And the reception of the book has been so amazing. It yeah. makes us feel so good. Yeah. Makes um, it feel like it was all worth it. Absolutely. Just the fact that so many people are posting the book and posting the Audible that we've been reposting like crazy. Or the fact that, you know, they have these charts of, you know, when people are looking at certain books and the fact that we were like right by Dr. Seuss. Like, that is insane. Like, the Casey Crew book, Real Life, Real Love. And is... right after, I think, The Five Love, love Languages. Yes. Which is... I think we were in between Dr. Seuss and The Five Love Languages. Like, that is amazing. Like, we're next to Dr. Seuss. Like, how crazy is that? Like, I didn't expect that at all. And so that is a pinch me moment. Like, wow, hopefully we're really helping people and really helping people's relationships and lives. And that's the main, the main goal, the main focus. Like, it, it's really making me a fall. Because fall. ultimately, it means Pinky that off, off, off. it means that the book is doing exactly what we intended for it to do, which is to help people. Absolutely, to help people that are either in relationships that may have just gotten out of relationships or that aspire to be in relationships. We give you the opportunity to learn from our flaws and from our greatnesses. We've made some bad decisions together, but we've also made some really, really amazing together, uh, decisions together. And we have a wonderful family. It's something that I am most proud of in my life, um, the way that we raise our children. And there are chapters in the book about that. So to see you know, the comments, the reviews, and the DMs, the emails, everything that we get for people that have started reading the book or finish reading the book in two days if they got their copy early. It's just so gratifying and satisfying, and it really pleases me. We Steph Curry, Dr. Seuss. How about that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Next question. Maria from Canada. Maria, what up? Hello, Crazy Crew. Gia is a unicorn. As a law student, I can tell you right now, Gia, you would make an incredible attorney because of all her ability to reason logically and lay out an argument with almost a meditative state of non-judgment. How do you hone this skill? Is this something you practice because every argument is well thought, but also done without a long pause? Gia, you need to have your own podcast for us women. Thank you, and I hope to see you guys live someday. Wow. I agree with you. <laughs> I tell her all the time she's an attorney. Just imagine how you feel. So just imagine on the other end of that argument. When you were just talking about, you know, because most fellas, we don't want to argue. And if we argue, it's something that's right on the top of our mind. Gia has her case laid out like, brrr. so if you don't come like ready for war, you can't argue with Gia. But I tell her that all the time. She should have been an attorney. Her and my son, they think alike, they speak alike, they talk Logan. alike. And they both <laughs> would, they would have been excellent attorneys. So maybe Logan still has a chance to be attorney. Gia as well. What's her name again? Maria. So Maria... Um, I don't know if you know, I don't know if you watch our podcast, whatnot, but that was my aspiration when I was in college. I uh, studied communications and pre-law, so I always wanted to be an attorney, but we took the route of raising a family instead. But to answer your question, um, no, I, it's not something that I've ever honed. Um, it's just the way that my mind works. I think that I'm a relatively logical and reasonable person. So if something doesn't make sense in my mind, it doesn't make sense, period. And then the rest of my thought process follows along those lines. So, you know, I, I don't think that um, in a disagreement, I don't attack. It's not like I'm like, it's, it's not like that. It's just um, the way that my mind works. On the other end of that, it feels like, <laughs> but, but you guys, you can, if anybody who purchases a book right now through Premier, uh, Premier Collectibles, you get a signed autographed copy. So if you have the Audible or you have a book, 
This is the perfect, and I know Mother's Day is coming around the corner, so is Father's Day. So this is the perfect gift for Mother's Day and Father's Day, maybe for your mom or dad or for a family member or another couple. It's the perfect gift. Now, we got another question? Yes. TJ from Michigan, what's your next dream car that you want? Hmm. TJ from Michigan wants to know what is Rashawn's next dream car that he wants. Okay, it's two. One is a LaFerrari. Uh, and the other is a Bucati uh, Chiron. Those are the two cars that I want. Uh, I thought about getting it uh, in the last couple of months, but there's so many other things that we're doing and investing in. So maybe when those investments pay off, I will be able to purchase it. And the reason I say I'll be able to purchase it, because uh, if you know me, anytime I want to buy something, I make sure that I have an investment and that investment pays for it. Uh, it's just the way that I, I, the way that we do everything. And that way we just know that we always have investments out there. So if an investment doesn't pay for what we want, we just don't purchase it at the right. time. Next question. Speak up, Ben. No Speak problem. Up. Make sure they can hear you. Cheyenne from Maryland. Advice to singles out there who are wanting to be married. Oh, I'm glad that that question was asked. Advice to singles out there. Who's that question from? Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Okay. Oh. Cheyenne from? Mercedes from. <laughs> Cheyenne from? <laughs> Maryland. Cheyenne from Maryland wants to know questions basically that advice to singles out there advice to wanting. singles who want to be married yeah. so in our book there is a section called 25 questions to ask yourself before you get married so mm -hmm. i'm glad that you posed that question because that's the reason why we put it in the book mm -hmm. um there are 25 good ones um so how about each of us share one with everyone here. So there's a lot of significant ones, but one that I think is um, at the core of what you should ask yourself before you get married is, do you understand what a lifetime actually means? Do you understand that people go through changes, mental changes, physical changes, spiritual changes we went through a spiritual change that benefited us. Um, changes of all sorts throughout a marriage. And some of those changes aren't just momentarily, but they are long lasting and that can change a person forever. So do you understand that a lifetime encompasses all of that? Do you understand that you might be married to someone or hoping to marry someone who may have a dream or an ambition that is never realized and they're crushed as a result of, the, of it. And maybe they become resentful and bitter and turn into that. They personify those emotions and it happens over a period of time and you have to bear the brunt of it. Are you the type of person that'll try to help them, support them, give them the nurturing and the encouragement that they need? Or are you the type of person to say, like, I'm tired of this. Do you, will you get exhausted and be annoyed. What's your what's your personality? Are you cut out to be with one person through all of their changes for a lifetime? Because marriage isn't necessarily just about the wedding and the spectacle of it all and just the big beautiful day. Once that day is over, that's when you begin your life and may start to have a family and things of that nature. Are you willing to commit through the thick, the thin, the good, the bad, the ups, the downs, all of the ugly for a lifetime. That's something that I think that people really have to consider before they get married. What about you? Yeah, there's 25 questions. I see a lot of questions coming through, so we're going to have to go through them fast. But, okay. Um, there's 25 questions which we break down in the book. Are these questions you should ask yourself before getting married? Uh, and like I said, if you purchase the book right now, you get an autographed copy. Uh, I can go through mine, but there's so many of them you can get the book and read. I think yours was a detailed answer. Okay, good. Now, also, uh, I'm just looking at some of the questions. Somebody said, did Irma come back? So if you don't know who Irma was, Irma was uh, the kid's original nanny. Uh, Irma went back to her home country. Uh, Ecuador. And Ecuador, yeah. and she had a baby. Uh, the crazy thing about that is so many doctors told her that she wouldn't be able to have a baby. She went to in vitro, all that. It all failed. When she went back home, her husband gave her some pee-pee, and awesome. she got pregnant. So Irma is, she might be on here checking this out right now, but Irma is back home. She still FaceTimes with the kids every other day. The kids still call her all the time. So Irma is uh, back home in Ecuador. Somebody also asked, um, 
real estate. How come we didn't write about real estate? Well, this was about our relationship and how we met and how we, you know, how our marriage stayed together after 27 years and married 21, how we keep the spice in it, how we don't hate each other. Forget about how we don't hate each other. It's more about how we still want to be together because Correct. being together is a choice. Absolutely. No one puts a gun to your head and forces you to remain in a marriage. It's your choice. And some people do it while being disgruntled about having to be there because, oh, I have a house, I have obligations, mm -hmm. I have kids, I have this. It's about wanting to be there. Absolutely. So Hold on. Someone asked, how do they get a book? Well, you could just go to premiercollectibles.com slash Casey. You order your book, and like I said, it'll be autograph signed, and uh, you get it in a couple of days. So if you want an autograph copy, the copies that you get on Amazon, they're not autographed. These will be autographed. You can go to premiercollectibles.com slash Casey, and you get your autograph copies. But to answer your question, yes, we probably will be doing a real estate book where we break down how we purchased our properties from the first property where our first property, we paid 15% interest. So we'll break down that how we flip properties, how we did it in Detroit, made money, how we did it in Patterson, how we did it all over. So we, yeah. we're going to do a, a book about that. But this one is about relationships because I always say without a strong relationship, without this strong marriage, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be able to do the things that I did today. Having your best friend in your corner, your best friend to support you, your best friend to hold you down, to rub your back, to make sure that they continually lift you up. That's men and women. I wouldn't be half the person I am today. So that is the most important thing. God in this relationship. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that, that book later on. Next question. Kelsey from Arizona. Go to date night for you all. <laughs> Kelsey from Arizona wants to know what is a go to date night for us? There are two. Okay. For me, mm -hmm. one is dining at my favorite restaurant, which is Tao Downtown in New York City. Correct. Um, I love their Chalene's uh, sea bass skewers. Mm -hmm. I love their tuna over crispy rice. Fried and red snapper. And their fried red snapper in sand with their lobster fried rice. Rashawn doesn't like kimchi, so Rashawn will get a shrimp fried rice with no vegetables. Correct. So that's what we order every time. Sometimes we'll add like a filet mignon. To the table um so just the dinner that's that's enough for me because i'm usually kind of wanting to get home to my kids but an ideal date night if i am being honest i mean we can say something that sounds like glamorous glamorous and fancy but truthfully it would be my kids being put to bed maybe half an hour early at eight o'clock because their bedtime is 8 30. us getting naked cuddling in the bed with two cold Pepsis with ice on our night table, a remote in hand, televisions off, watching Netflix. That's it. That is it. Cuddling, That's watching it. TV. Us cuddling, me rubbing his back and his butt <laughs> while we watch TV. And then, you know, a little bit of time passes when we start to feel a little tired. Then the TV goes off and then we entertain ourselves. That's right. And when I say we don't watch anything serious sometimes, we just watch the stupidest reality shows that just Yeah, sometimes we enjoy. sometimes it's that. Right now I'm watching what's that show? Um, The Ultimatum. I'm watching that on Netflix. Right, right, watch that. right now. I think I have two episodes mm -hmm. left to go. But then I do like all of my cheesy reality show TV. And then we love real estate well. shows, million dollar listing. Million dollar listing. I watch Love It and Listed. I love what's the what's the other one that I love all the time? Me and the baby watches. Um Which one? Oh my gosh, you I can't think of the name of He it. said him and the baby because him and Peyton. <laughs> Oh, Sometimes man. he'll say to me, you know what, baby? Storage I'm... wars. Storage but wars. That's not real estate. That's just yeah, that, nonsense. Yeah, no, just, but I, me and I don't Peyton, like that show. Me and Peyton watch that. We will sit up, I'll feed her, and we'll just he'll sit there. He'll say, babe, just go have two hours to yourself. Go take a long bath. Relax. You know, pamper yourself. Just, I don't want you to have any anything going on. Just go and concentrate on you. And he'll have Peyton. And he'll be holding her next to him like a little football. And they'll be watching TV together. Me and Peyton, so Peyton loves, likes storage what? wars. She okay. loves Peyton sit there and just watch it and just be into it. But that's really an ideal um, date night for us because we go out a lot. We travel a lot. We're in nice cities often, Vegas, Atlanta, Miami, and we travel as a family a lot. So just the opportunity to just be home relax, not have to get dolled up, not have to do my hair, not have to do my makeup and just lay naked in bed and feel my baby's warm body next to me. It just feels amazing. Another question is, um, see somebody said, I love storage wars. Uh, 
can get a cook, right? So this is how we do cooking in our house. Wait, who asked the question? I don't know who it was. Well, you have to say their name. It looks like Anne Marie. Looks like that was her name. Hold on a second, guys. Where? What my, number is my it? My Russo. Oh. See it? No. It's right there in the bottom. Oh, it's at the oh, bottom. Anne Marie. Yeah. Anne Marie. Okay, Anne Marie. I got Dr. Delarusso. Dr. Yes. Delarusso is a, a doctor in New York that does LASIK. He did my LASIK like ten years ago. But anyway, can uh, no, like fifteen cook. years ago. So this is how we do food in our house. I'm breakfast all day long. Yes. I get busy with the breakfast. Yes. Like. Your favorite breakfast spot can't F with my bacon, can't F with my sausage, yes. my omelets, my eggs, my cheese, none of that. French toast waffles, that is what I this do. This is true. I have to say, his mother and him make the best bacon I have ever had. I can't even make bacon as good as the two of them. And I'm sorry, we eat pork. So if you have a pork problem, we eat pork. I'm sorry. It is what it is. <laughs> the pig, oink, oink, nothing wrong uh -huh. with the pig over here. So uh, we do. Uh, but when it comes to dinner, Gia gets busy. Gia does macaroni and cheese. Like, and this is the crazy part. When I was a kid, I hated baked macaroni and cheese. Hated it. I know. I know. I know. Because your mother's baked mac and cheese. Watch your mouth. <laughs> Watch your mouth. A little questionable. Watch your mouth. <laughs> so I grew up on heavy Velveeta. Velveeta was in our house. My mother made it one, two, three, you boil a macaroni. Velveeta shells put, and cheese. That was my thing. That's what I love. So Gia started making baked mac and cheese and I love it. And, you know, we do the greens. Gia's yeah, greens just taste amazing. They don't even taste like greens. They're so good. Uh, and then, you know, Gia, yeah, her favorite meal, I call it flat chicken. So flat That's not my favorite. I make it for you because you love right. it. Right. So it's chicken breast. You put some Goya sauce on it. What's that? What's the sauce? It's the, the orange Goya seasoning. Orange Goya seasoning. That's Gia's fan inside. And then she puts a little jerk, which is Gia's Jamaican side. And not in the same dish. I don't put Goya in jerk. Just, you don't know what's going on. In the kitchen. It just dinner. tastes good. How okay. about that? It tastes good and I love it. And we, but, don't, we don't eat it enough. But I'm part Jamaican, so I do the oxtail and the curry oh, chicken and the sweet plantain. And yeah, all of that. too. Nice. So, yes. I so love to cook. So, it'd be like, suavemente, blah, 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 suavemente, blah. Well, that's more like the paella one. That's more the Spanish side of me. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot going on in our kitchen. All right. Next question. Uh, Lorraine from Colorado. Lorraine! Any, any uh, advice uh, to parents raising littles and teenagers? Any advice to parents raising littles and teenagers? I could write a book on, you know, thoughts that I have about raising littles and, and maybe, teenagers. So might, the answer is a big, overwhelming yes. But yeah, there are sections in the book about raising littles and teenagers um actually a couple of sections in the book that's kind of dedicated Small, to, we're thinking to about parenting. doing a full because we have so many kids we have six you know we have a 20 18 8 7 5 and a four month old i would say this with the littles you have to get them under control early yes right? we don't play the falling out crying we don't we don't play that. that that gets stopped immediately you cry you fall out you stay there we're not effing with you it is what it is and that works well none of our kids fall out and cry they might do it one time and when they realize mom and dad ain't effing around it's no longer and that's with everybody so let's say you know mercedes is my assistant let's say mercedes has to pick up the kids or mercedes is doing something with the kids she's the same way what you cry what we don't do mercedes we don't, we do, don't that do that over here auntie will who's is that with the kids right now we don't do that uncle sean we don't do that my parents her parents her brother we don't do that. So the kids know sternly, like, that doesn't work in our household. If there's a problem, you say what the problem is. You say what's bothering you. We have a conversation. Like, like we don't, not like adults, but like big boy conversations or big girl conversations. And that's how we handle it. And it's worked for five of the kids. Six of them we don't know yet. <laughs> but she's a little spoiled, so pray for us because she's the last one. So everybody just kisses her and smiles. And, and I don't know. But that's what we do, I say, with the smaller kids. Mm -hmm. The older kids... Wait, wait, before you get to the older kids, hold mm -hmm. that thought. I just want to say something because you made me think about something with, with what you were saying. So if you have small kids, toddler age, they are inclined to, like Rashawn said, throw themselves on the floor, throw a tantrum, sometimes pick up bad language from school. What I've found is you have to show your kids that you mean business in home and in public. Because what I've seen with friends, I don't think any of our kids have really tried me with this at a young age but a lot of kids will act out in public because they're operating with the sense that 
oh, mommy's not going to embarrass me. Oh, we'll embarrass the kid in public. It doesn't matter if there's 10,000 people. Oh, in. mommy's not going to scream at me in the store. Oh, mommy's not going to scream at me at the softball field. Oh, mommy's not going to do anything to me in Target. So they run amok, they yell, they scream, I want that, buy that for me now. What? Oh, no, no, no. You will get yoked up and told all about yourself, yelled at, and thoroughly embarrassed in the store, in front of all the people, and it will only take one time. Because once they realize that you're no nonsense and that you mean business, they are not going to want to be embarrassed to that degree again. So for me, it's about setting a precedence one time so that your kids know exactly who you are as a parent, what you will tolerate and what you won't tolerate. I agree. And and for the, as they get older, it'll also prevent them from trying to show off in front of their friends. Absolutely. And I'm known for the four o'clock wake up. Get, get no, what, there's a problem? All right. When I get up at four o'clock, the whole house up at four o'clock. Everybody's up at four Everybody's o'clock. Everybody's up at four o'clock. So nobody mess with that. If you did something you foul, did something everybody gets Everybody getting up. Yes. Get, we get, must all suffer. Oh, oh, I tell you to pick up your sneakers. You didn't pick up your sneakers? Four o'clock in the morning? Get your Why ass up. Why are they by the front door? Pick up them sneakers. Yeah. Pick, oh, oh, you didn't take out the trash? It's not just sneakers. It's cleats. It's 20 degrees Why outside? Why the cleats by the front door? Take that damn trash out right now. That is cold as bears out there. Well, you better dodge those bears. You better run fast. You better run really fast. Yes. But, uh, we the, live in the woods. The kids really get it, though. They, they understand it. Just one time, and our kids are the best kids ever. Yeah, it's just about being stern and maintain, like saying what you mean and meaning what you say. Absolutely. Yes. Next question. Derek from Iowa. What's one of your favorite shows you have done from The Breakfast Club? Oh, Derek from Iowa wants to know what is one of your favorite shows that you've done. From I mean, the since you asked today when the book comes out and my wife was just on The Breakfast Club. Uh, of course, I, I love today's episode. Um, <laughs> the fact that my wife was on, on the show and she was able to talk about our relationship. And not only that, a lot of times, I guess people really didn't know uh, Gia, right? They see her on, on the side of my, my arm and they say she looks so beautiful, so stunning. But a lot of people didn't know how smart she was. They didn't know how bright she was and how well she speaks and her thoughts and, and the things that go through my mind. Like, I always say that your spouse or the person that you with is a, a, a reflection of you. And, you know, Gia is, she is my backbone. Like, she is the one that's going to fix me up. She is going to want, like, for instance, Instagram. If you ever see a misspelling, that's me. If it's spelled correctly, like the right there and theirs or the right uh, where and where's, that's Gia. Simple as that, you know what I mean? But uh, I, I love the fact that she was able to speak. People were actually able to hear her comment on different things and see how bright and smart she was. Uh, she is. I always think that Gia should be a talk show host or she should be hosting her own whatever. I just, I love the way she is with people. She's listened. She's understanding. She's patient. And I think she's one of the best that ever did it when it comes to media. I just think she just has uh, had a chance or opportunity because she was raising our kids. She went to school for communication, so she knows the business. And I, like I tell everybody, I did the first 40 years. She's doing the next. Because now I'm going to sit back and let Oprah just take it away. <laughs> okay. Next well, question. Thank you. Kobe from California. Kobe from California. Can you share with us what it was like and what you had to do to be successful as you were trying to break into the industry? How did you become successful as you were breaking into the industry? Well, I tell everybody, and this is how we always do, and this is with everything. Um, I tell everybody all the time, I'm not the best DJ. I can't scratch like Jazzy Jeff. Um, there's certain things that I can't do like a lot of these other DJs. But one thing that I can do better than a lot of DJs out there is I will outwork you. I will outthink you. I will outsmart you. I will outmarket you, like plan everything out. Same thing with this book. Um, shout to Abrams, shout to every, shout to iHeart, shout to everybody. But when it came to this book, um, Whatever I thought or whatever we thought about doing, we did. We didn't ask. We just went and did. And a lot of times the book company was like, wow, that is amazing. And before they could be like, okay, we'll do this, it was already done. Um, like the box set that we did, we sent out to celebrities because we wanted celebrities and influencers to post to, to talk about the book. And we created a box. And then in the box was a Walkman. I created a mixtape. And, you know, we just had things in the box that represented our union. And everybody loved it. And it was just our own thoughts. We just think about it and we do it. We never allow anybody to tell us that we can't. I remember even doing the car show or even the podcast. People was like, ah, oh, podcasts are whack. Oh, nobody goes to car shows anymore. Nobody wanted to support. So I was like, all right, we'll do it ourselves. And we sat there and we did a car show. And that car show was done with me, 
Mercedes, my wife, and Madison, and Adasha. Five people put on a car show with 15,000 people. Now, we were all stressed out. Our backs were hurting. We were all achy, but we Oh, you got the part that you were nasty. I do get a little nasty when I'm stressed out, but it's, it's a lot <laughs> it's on a little us. moody. It's a little moody. He has a little stress on his shoulders. But we did it, and that's the whole thing. You can do whatever you want to do. And somebody asked that Clue put me on. Clue, um, Clue introduced me into DJ, and I'll tell the story right fast if you don't know. I, I was outside waiting on the bus stop. I wasn't sucking on a lollipop, but I was um, at the bus stop. Uh, me and Clue lived on the same block. I didn't know Clue was Clue. I knew him as Ernesto. And that's, and that's his real name, Ernesto. Me and Ernesto. And, and if you know, the whole like thing behind DJ Clue is that nobody knew who Clue really was. Mm -hmm. His thing was a question mark. And it's like this big mystery, which kind of was genius when it came to like marketing and selling mm -hmm. mixtapes. Of course, he was amazing and talented and his mixtapes were bomb. But it was like, who is he? So Yeah, so... I didn't know. So I seen him at the bus stop and he had a dope car. I don't know if it was a Honda at the time or a BMW I think 3 it was a Series. Honda. And but back then a Honda was a Bentley. If you had a Honda Accord, it was your Bentley. Yeah. Um so I seen him I ran up to him, I said, Yo, what are you doing? I thought he sold drugs. And he was like, Yo, come to my house after school. He lived across the street. And when I went into his house after school, I went into his basement. He had all these records and, and DJ equipment and all that. And I was like, This is what I want to do. And that's where I started. And I actually a guy named DJ Mono who I'm still friends with to this day, he taught me how to DJ. Um, so that's why I take it so personal to really um, express and explain what I do to make money. Um, so I'm hoping that one day I can have a positive influence on somebody out there, maybe that I don't know. Maybe that just sees me and was like, you know what, because of envy, I want to DJ. Or because of envy, I want to do real estate. Or because of envy, I want to um, get married and have a family. Or because of envy, I want to do car shows or whatever it may be. Um, there's other ways than selling drugs and playing basketball and rapping. Um, and I'm, I'm a prime example of that. You know what I mean? I couldn't rap. I couldn't play basketball, but I DJ. I still wanted to do something in music. And there's so many different ways to do it. So that's why I continue to push and explain how I do it. I never want anybody to be like, oh, he sold drugs and it's cool. No, I never sold a, a drug, a dime, a nick. Um, I, I don't even, I couldn't even measure any, any of that. I don't know what how coke and crap. I don't know any of it, and I'm proud to say that. Some people be like I did, and that's that's their journey. That wasn't mine, and I'm happy for my journey. And my journey is a way that I can look over my shoulder, and I I don't have to look over my shoulder every time I go out because I didn't do anybody dirty. And that's what I want people and young kids to understand. Well, it's about the how. You know, Rashawn is talking about how he came up and how he realized his dream. How you know, there was fruit at the end of that tree for him. And that's what we're doing with the book. We want to share our hows. You know, how did you maintain a successful marriage for so many years? It wasn't without trials and tribulations. It wasn't without problems, but it was the fact that we wanted to be together and was willing to do whatever it took to be together and to be happy and to try to um, become as self-actualized as we both could individually to be the best that we could individually so that we could be the best that we could be together and we just wanted to share our story so that hopefully people can read it and say hey you know that's a possibility for my life as well and you can order your book right now at premiercollectibles.com slash casey if you have an audio book or you have a regular book this one is autographed. We'll autograph the copy and get it out right to you. Yes. Uh, and, and even if you, you have one already, this is a perfect gift for Father's Day or Mother's Day. So definitely get the book, premiercollectibles.com slash Casey. Now somebody said, well, what did you guys major in college? He majored in communications. Mm -hmm. I majored in business in marketing. I didn't, major, I didn't do anything in music. And the reason being is I knew I was going to do music. Um, and, and I just knew that I was going to do well in music. But I wanted to know once I got there, how was I going to manage my money, manage myself, and market myself. So I took classes in those things. Um, somebody said, I'm listening to the audio book right now. It's so good. Let me tell you about the audio book. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. <laughs> I oh, wait, hold it first. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I realized that with the uh, audio book that I don't know how to read. <laughs> no, no, no. Like I read every morning in the breakfast club, but it's short reads. I can read the news. I read rumors. But when I had to read like pages and like pages half of a book and pages, yes. I was effing up so many damn times. I, I was embarrassed. And then I, the reason I was even more embarrassed is like, you know, let's say the book is
is 280 pages, right? So it's 140 me, 140 give. Give was getting through that sucker so fast. Like, because <laughs> I wrote it. <laughs> I wrote it too, but it was still hard to read. I look out the window. I look out the little door to see, and she's like, page 82. And I'm like, page two. I'm like, I got, it got so frustrating. I had to leave. Walk downstairs, walk around the block to get fresh air, and come back up and go read again. That's how difficult it was because I never had to read out out loud. Like, I don't know if it's that. I think it was more so because it meant so much to you, and you wanted to nail it. You wanted to get it right. When you're reading an ad on the radio, it's a little bit different. When you're reading the news, you're just telling someone else's. Yes, maybe. You know, this I think you wanted to nail because you wrote it and because it came from your heart. Art. There's so many, look, you know, Lincoln and, Tech, and, you know, and, mechanic, okay, this, for instance, for instance, the general, I, I, general can say, I can say to you, I love you, or I can say, I love you, you know, one has emotion and one has none. Do you see what I mean? So I think that for you, you wanted to convey the emotion and what you were thinking and how you felt as you were writing. So I think that you wanted to nail it. I don't think it's because you can't read well. I think that you just had so much invested and you were so proud of it that you wanted it to be conveyed in the audio book. And I think you did an amazing job. It's so easy to read Dr. Seuss to the kids, boy. Dr. Seuss be good. The cat in the hat had a mat and then he spat into a rat. That was easy. But that book was, was, it was challenging, but I enjoyed it. Next question. On. Jake and Mel from Wisconsin. How do you guys make time for... Uh, one another with a busy schedule, something you would say to a couple who is struggling with unmet expectations. Mm -hmm. What do we say to a couple with unmet expectations when there's two people in a relationship that are living very busy lives? How do we make time for each other and make it work? Um, I think one, I, I think a lot of times people want uh, to be, when they think about uh, spending time, have to be with each other all the time, like have to do something together. But sometimes our lives don't permit that, right? If you have kids, you know, some there's sometimes where Gia's over here with one kid and I'm over here with another kid and, you know, Gia's doing this at, at the house and I'm at another show. But what I think really connects us at is we're always on the phone with each other, right? If you're, if you go to work or you, or, or you have to, whatever you do, you have to go to work. You have to drive for a lot of people. During that drive time, instead of listening to the music or listening to the radio, which I'm saying, which unless it's the breakfast club, any other time you ain't got to. But when you're driving, Guy and I speak to each other all the time. You know, when I'm on, driving to work, you know, usually Guy is up feeding the baby. We have conversations about whatever it may be. It might be about one of our kids. It might be about what we're going to do this weekend. It might be about anything, but we're connecting. Then when I come home from work, whether if I'm driving to the office or she's going somewhere, we have another conversation about whatever it may be. It could be something small. It could be about, babe, did you see Bachelor last night? No, I missed it. What happened? Well, let me tell you about this. Or it could be like, yo, you know what I just seen on the plane? Who? I seen so-and-so. Word. What was that? But even though we're not connecting like we would want to, we're still speaking to each other. We're still talking to each other. We're still being best friends. If I'm at the mall That's and I'm, I'm buying thinking. something, yeah. I still, hey, babe, Look, I, I want to get a pair. And people say, oh, stupid. Babe, I, I want to get these jeans. Well, how do they jeans look? Ah, they got rips here. Let me see them. We talk back and forth. Like, gear is my best friend. Just like I would call one of the homies for something. Oh, yo, I'm thinking about this. I call gear the same. Yo, babe, I'm thinking about so and so and so. Well, you should do this. All right. And she does the same. Just to be completely honest, right? When it comes to whatever gear is into, whatever it may be, bags. I learn about the bags as well because I want to know exactly what she's into. Same thing with me. If, if I'm into a car, she learns that car just like me. She could tell you about a 918 Porsche. She could tell you about a Tesla. She could tell you about a, a, a Ford GT. She could tell you about a Nissan Pathfinder because if I'm talking about it, she learns about it. And that same thing with me. I, I, know, I know too much about Birkins. I know too much about clothes. I know too much about different clothing designers and shoes and where she goes to get the shoes, put the bottoms on the shoes so they don't mess up. And I know all that too much, but that's our relationship. Yeah. I mean, we're our affinity towards each other is really rooted in our friendship and the fact that we genuinely enjoy each other's company. Like we laugh constantly we're always joking and just doing silly things i mean things that i mean i'd be embarrassed to talk I, not too many things embarrass me but things i'd be embarrassed to talk about but we just really enjoy each other at 
our core. And that's one of the biggest um, pieces of advice that I would give people. Um, mm -hmm. You really have to enjoy the person that you choose because it is a choice. There are so many people in the world that, you know, don't be in a rush, don't feel pressured, don't feel that vice that a lot of women feel as though we were we are in to get married by a certain time and have children by a certain time because that puts you in a situation where you settle. Mm -hmm. You settle because it's like, damn, time's 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 ticking and he's up. He's up and there's nobody else around right now. So I just have to make a decision that's not really in my best interest because if that person isn't your best friend, how are you going to do that thing that I was talking about earlier, which is a lifetime mm -hmm. with them? You really have to enjoy the person that you're with. I still get excited every single time that the phone rings and I see Rashawn's iPhone on my screen. It's like, I'm like oh, it's my baby. And I pick up, and if he calls me five times in a row, I'm excited each one of those five times. And again, it's because we enjoy each other and he makes me laugh and he makes me feel loved. And this is 27 years later. This is through highs, through lows, through problems, through 27 years, through all of that. And I still feel the same way that I did one week into the relationship. So you have to make sure that you choose the right person. Absolutely. And when it comes to this woman right here, I feel the same. I tell everybody all the time, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be who I am today. And I would say if you haven't got the book, get the book, Premier Collectibles slash Casey. Uh, it'll help you out with your relationship. It'll guide you through some of the things that, that I did wrong, that we did wrong, but also what we did good that helps our relationship. Uh, and I say this, the, the last thing I, I would always say is you must, you must know the true definition of love, right? And the reason I say that is because it's easy to say you love somebody. I love you. You love me. We love each other. But if you don't know the true definition of love, right? If, you don't, if you're not talking love, you're not talking about butterflies in your stomach. And you're not talking about not hurting somebody. You're not being a completely honest. And that person not really being your everything, your best friend, like this relationship. We went through a lot of bull crap. I put her through a lot of bull crap. Uh, I would say it a million times like, damn, I wish, but I would tell you this, I wouldn't change it for the world because at the end of all the bull-ish where we got our relationship together, where I fixed up and got myself together as a man, the blessings continue to come. When I put God first, I put faith first and do what's right and make sure that this is my best friend and I will never hurt my best friend and I will be completely honest with my best friend and me and her are completely open when it comes to everything, any problem, any disturbance, anything that's ever wrong in our relationship, our life has become amazing and we detail that in the book. So we wanna tell you guys, if you haven't got it, go to premiercollectibles.com slash Casey, get the book. Um, because of COVID, there's so many bookstores not doing in-store signings, which we hate yeah. because we really want to come out, talk to you. Uh, yesterday we did something uh, in um, DC. Washington, D.C. at Mahogany Books and shout to the Jasmine brand. They actually, hosted she it. actually hosted it and it was just great because we were able to talk to people that had questions and we signed the book. So hopefully we'll do more of these. We'll do some more autographed copies and hopefully we'll see you soon. We're actually heading out to L.A. this Saturday. We're going to uh, the L.A. Book Fest. So we'll be out there signing autographs and talking to people and just trying to spread the word of the book. So if you haven't got it, please pick it up. And we also want you guys to, if you got the book, if you want to talk about what you learned in the book, talk about what you liked about the book, talk about what you hated about the book, tag us. We, we They're want, not going to hate anything about the book. Okay. All right. Well, tag us because we want to repost it. If you purchase the book, you're reading it, tag us. Like, we, we think it's big. Like, this book, book is all about community. We want to be there together and talk yeah. about this book. So tag us. You see, if you look at my Instagram story, a gear story, we've been doing it all day long. So we just want to say we appreciate you guys, and um, we look forward to coming to your city. You got one last thing? Yeah. So they want to do 22 questions in two minutes. 22 questions in two minutes. Go! 22 questions in two minutes. So yeah, so so okay, we have, speed is, we have the speed answer. He's bad at this, but we'll see. She Ready? does not do her family feud well. Go. Oh, okay. Hold on. Wait, wait. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm bomb at family feud. Let's see. Um, this isn't family feud. I'm bomb at family. I don't know if I'm going to get this, but I'm bomb at family, family feud. Go. Go. It's, it's together. Are you timing it? I'm on the timer right now. Okay. So whoever is, are ready? You have to speak really loud. I so can hear you. All right. Ready? Okay. And clock has started. Where were you born? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Who, who would you want to play in a movie? 
Will Smith. Come on. Damn. Angelina Jolie. What was your first job? I worked at a camera store. Telemarketing. What chore do you hate doing? Cleaning toilets. Taking out the garbage. What is your biggest fear? Something happening to one of my children or my husband. Being broke. Damn. Who makes you laugh the most? <laughs> what is one thing you need to have in your fridge at all times? Strawberries. Soda. What is your favorite school subject? History. Gym. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the most interesting person you met recently? One minute. You're at number 10. Recently, Tamron Hall. We were on the Tamron Hall show the other day. The episode airs on the 25th. I would say, um... Most interesting person you've met recently. You meet somebody new every day. I know. We I can't. For a living. I can't think of it. That's why it's not as interesting as Skip, I was I'm with. winning. I'm right, winning. Go, 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 go. You're not on Family Feud with me. Fat what Joe, is your go. What is your biggest no. pet peeve? Biggest pet peeve? People that pick their nose. No. <laughs> people that spit. Get being late. Wow, that's true. What is your favorite hobby? Hanging out with my kids. Sleeping. What is your guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure. A pint of Haagen Dazs vanilla ice cream covered in fresh cut strawberries. Mine is bacon, sausage, and omelet with ham and French toast. Do you have any hidden talents? Hidden talents? I love dance hall music and I can whine while standing on my head. Strip them. Myself, I was a stripper. Yeah. Anything else? Did we get 20? No, no. But we'll keep going. We're going to keep going. We're going to do it fast still. Yep. What color is your toothbrush? Black. I use a Sonicare. No, it's not. You don't have yours one? Yours is purple. Mine is, Mine is not purple. Yours is purple. The ring around Mine is, is purple. not purple. What's the ring around yours? My not Sonicare black. is black. Well, what's the ring I around I use it? it twice a day. Hers has got the little purple. Mine is No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. You That's how the difference between mine and yours. You don't know anything about my toothbrush. You don't know anything about my toothbrush. What is your pet's name? We don't have a pet. Oh, <laughs> he's not a pet. He's an attack dog. He's Chuck a, Norris. He's a murderer. He's not a pet. I don't pet him, but his name is Chuck. Chuck Norris. I don't play with Chuck him. I'm, no. Mm -mm. What is your favorite word? Because. <laughs> <laughs> ask me again. Ask, ask me that again. What is your favorite word? Bitch, what's my favorite word? <laughs> I'm a DJ. All right, what else? What is the last album you bought or streamed? I'm the host of probably Maxwell. Go ahead. Maxwell. Uh, Fabio. Fabio Florence, uh last time. I just streamed it uh, a couple days ago. What is the last gift you gave? I gave Brooklyn a plush toy unicorn yesterday. What did you give? Oh, him. <laughs> You're just going to cheapen this whole event. That was the truth. That was the last gift. Oh, that was a gift now? That was a gift now. I apologize for him. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Thoroughly embarrassed right now. What is your greatest achievement? My family. Absolutely. Last question. Where do you want to go that you've never been? I would like to go to Thailand, followed by Greece. Yes. Okay. Then Bali. Yes. Then Singapore. Come on. Those are going to be the next four family vacations that are like on the other side of the world. I want to go to space. Stop it. Can you answer the question? <laughs> I'm serious. I want to go to space. Michael Strahan went to space. Jeff Bezos be going to space. Elon Musk be going to space. I want to go to space. I want to see what's popping in space. I want to do the first party in space. You're not going to go with me? Can, can you All right. name something like on one of the seven continents? I've been pretty much everywhere. I don't know where else. I would, I would have beat you in Family Feud. No, you wouldn't. I would have beat yes, you. Yes, yes. See, you, see, you came, you came up empty that. like twice. No, I mean, okay, I, I would right. have made something up. Okay, but. so anyway. Um, we're wrapping up now? That's right. Well, okay. again, premiercollectibles.com slash Casey. Get your autographed copy of the book. We appreciate you guys. And um, I'm sorry. I just want to answer one question because a lot of people have been asking me this question. What's that? Someone said, what happened to your tiny dog? So, guys, I had... Um, a toy Pomeranian. Uh, no, excuse me. It wasn't a toy. A micro Pomeranian. So typically the smallest of a breed is called a toy or a teacup. But Rashawn got me um, a Pomeranian from Korea. 
and he had to have it sent here with a dog nanny just to bring it over and um, he gave it to me for one of my big birthdays and we had the dog for some time and my dog passed away so if- thanks Shelly so um, some of you guys if you you know watch our podcast or if you follow me you know about Lola but I did kind of abruptly just stop talking about her uh, when she passed away just because it was too painful to talk about Um, I've grown to absolutely love and adore her and she passed away and the reason is a lot of times tiny dogs have um, problems that are just inherent to their nature because they're so small and she had some health issues that we weren't able to, um, to get taken care of so she passed away Okay, so now we can wrap. You just made you just depressed Shelly. Shelly was the hoping that she was like, oh, the dog's running around. So not that Shelly like, oh my, damn it, man. See what you done did, Shelly? Yes, uh, but this was about this was uh, Lola passed away pre-pandemic, That's so right. I've had I've had some time to heal. Absolutely. Well, shout out to you, you. All right. Well, definitely pick up the book pre- Premier Collectibles uh, dot com slash Casey, and we want you to read it. And don't forget to please leave reviews. Please, we would love to know what you thought about it. Uh, what you think about the book? And yeah, leave re- leave reviews on Amazon. That's right. So pick up the book, and we'll see you guys later. I'm going to take a nap because we've been up for like five days straight, ripping and running yes. and running and ripping. Yes. So with um, this press tour, um, myself nor Ben's slept last night. Yes. We got back from DC, DC so late, and then this morning um, we had to be at Good Morning America at like eight o'clock. No, no excuse no. me. Good day, New York. Good Morning Thank America was yesterday. Good day, New York today at like eight o'clock, so we didn't sleep. So we are running on fumes That's right. right now. He slept for about an hour and a half just cause you know, he doesn't have to do his hair or anything. So we are, we so are, but it's also worth it. It's also worth it just to make sure that everybody knows about the book and um, gets one and reaps all the benefits that we hope for you to reap after reading. All right, well, we'll see you guys later. Uh, and you know how we close it. I'm DJ Envy. And I am Casey. And you were just checking out the KC crew. Toodles. Hey, this is John Acuff, New York Times best-selling author of seven books and someone who's done a live signing. If you like the one you just watched, make sure you check out our YouTube channel. It's full of amazing authors having great conversations and signing books for viewers just like you. So make sure you subscribe and thanks for watching today.